Hey, thanks for coming by and checking out my channel. Pete's Snake Bite Kit. What this is about is about me building an AC Cobra replica or a Shelby Cobra replica, as some of you have uh, corrected me on. Anyway, it's a kit made by Hurricane Motorsports back in Iowa. Uh, this thing's been a lot of fun to do. It's up to a rolling chassis. Now, if you want to take a look at some earlier videos. But sometimes, if you've been here before, you know we take detours and go on field trips. Today's a field trip. We're going to go look at some cars at a, a shop not too far from here. I think you're going to like this. Come on, let's check it out. Hey, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a trip down to Kirkham Engineering and we're going to take a look at a 40 Ford that's unlike any 40 Ford you've ever seen, unless you've already seen this one, because it's the only one like it, trust me. So come on, let's take a look. See what we see. Okay, so let's take a ride to Kirkham Engineering. Uh, we're going to take a look at this GT40. It's not what you think. It's a GT40, 1940. What? So what happened was, and I didn't realize this until Tom explained it to me, but Ford didn't have the marketing rights to the name GT40 when they were trying to build their Gen 2 GT40 for the 2006 model year. They did have a running gear for it. He came up with this really cool idea for Ford marketing to build a 1940 Ford with GT running gear call it a GT40. You'll see what we mean. It's really unique. Uh, well, it's unique. Well, hey, some of you know I kind of get hung up on semantics, and I don't normally use the term very unique. I think something's unique, or it's not. This thing is very unique. So, let's take a look at it. Also, he'll have some other cars there. He's working on some CSX 2000 Daytona Coupes. Yeah, I said CSX 2000. That's a serial number that hasn't been used since the 60s. Why is he getting to use it? Because they're super cool, that's why. Um, There's some really one-off things there too that he's working on. So, let's head on down, we'll take a look. So here's Tom, here's the, the man, the idea, the genius behind this machine. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, how did this come to be, you building this one-off exotic deal? Uh, we were talking with Ford Motor Company, their representative, and uh, they were talking about, you know, that they had lost the, uh, or couldn't get the Ford, uh, the GT40 name, had lost the rights to that. And uh, I said, hey, we could build a, uh, a 40 GT instead of a GT40, and they go, hmm, I said, we can even do it out of copper, and they said, that sounds cool, let's do it. Wow, that's really thinking outside the box, that's awesome. Yeah, it started off as a joke, and this is what happened. <laughs> Sometimes when practical jokes are taken too far, you never know what's going to happen. Yes. Right? So, how long did it take you guys to build this thing? Just under a year. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work, must have had a lot of hands on that. Oh yeah, we had a full factory going on. Yeah, very nice. And so, um, with this car, are you doing anything else like this these days? Any other unique cars? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I've got one here. It's a, a Falcon that we're building with the, the Voodoo engine in it. Oh, wow. Maybe we could take a look at that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's have a walk around on this 1940 GT. So, copper body, as he mentioned. Super cool. The uh, ghost flames there. Really nice looking interior. Of course, all of this is, you know, handmade. There's our supercharged Ford GT power plant. They've got grafted into the back of this thing. You can see the hinges and the frame are made from stainless steel, which of course is pretty cool. The wheels off of the uh, Ford GT. The exhaust was made by Borla for the GT, and then they modified it to work in here. Nice looking frame. There's her license plate from SEMA 2005. It says the taillights and the headlights are the only pieces on this that would actually fit 
on a 1940 Ford. Here's a look from the driver's side in at the supercharged power plant. Pretty sweet. The running boards are aluminum. The door hinges are stainless. All oh, Ford Motorsport gauges. Just everything's really detailed out. Super nice. Nice looking leather seats in there. Windshield slanted back pretty far. Just a beautiful piece, isn't it? Oh yeah, if those seats look familiar, that's what would go in a Cobra. Pretty sweet touch. I thought these billet pedals looked really nice. Got the GT engraved in them and the Supercharge engraved in them. So here's what I call kind of hardcore detailing is when there's details you don't even see unless the builder points them out to you. So there's no door handles on the outside, which we've seen that a lot, but the door handle on the inside you can't even see unless you bend over and look up at it, and then at that, it's a handmade billet door handle. Okay, so Tom, as we've talked about a little bit, I'm building a, a Hurricane Cobra replica, and what I'm doing looks pretty simple compared to something like this. So on your build, what was the most challenging thing about this, would you say? Ooh, it was all hard. The whole thing? <laughs> uh, welding the, the copper was very difficult, getting it to weld up good. The problem with welding copper is if you weld it and you have a problem, you get to cut out the whole section. So you wow. just more than doubled your work. So that was a, a learning curve, getting uh, the engine sorted. Originally, we are going to have it front engine, and then we just ran out of time, and we said, uh, let's put it in the back. I mean, it just on and on and on. This was a, a long and trying experience. I'll bet. What would you say would have been the most satisfying or the most fun part of this build? Uh, showing you at SEMA. Oh, okay, yeah, that must have been a big deal. Uh-huh. Yeah. And good. seeing everybody's reaction. And making the deadline, I bet. Yes. <laughs> that would be satisfying to actually pull that off. Yes, we were working on this car as it was being loaded up in the transport trailer. Wow. Well, hey, I really appreciate you giving us an opportunity to look at this. I, I can't imagine a car being more one-off than this one or more special. Uh, this thing's really great. Really appreciate it. Uh, this. Now, is this car for sale? Everything's for sale. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll put a link to your email on here if somebody needs to buy this thing. I hope okay. they got some money. Yeah. All right. Hey, well, thanks again. Thank you. So, some of the other really neat stuff that's here. So, this is a Daytona Coupe he's, he's building that, that is exact. These have interchangeable parts with the original cars. This one's a standard wheelbase, the 90 inch wheelbase. He's also working on one that is an extended wheelbase that would have been what Carroll Shelby wanted to build if he could have. So this one's three inches longer. You can kind of see it in the, uh, the clip right behind the front fender opening. This thing, if Carroll Shelby would have had his way, probably would have whooped up on even the Mark II GT40s. Uh, these things were probably going to have cameras in them. Uh, the Deuce didn't want these things beating his precious GTs. It was clean in house in international road racing and, of course, especially Le Mans. If you're building these things exact, you should have suspension that looks exactly like the real McCoy. That's what they make there. Hey, as long as you're building an exact replica of the long wheelbase Daytona Coupe that Carroll Shelby wanted to build, let's put a camera in it. Man, I wish this car was on order to go into my garage. So here's a car Tom's doing some work on for a friend of his. This came from Ken Block Stable, somebody bought from him. And it's a late 70s rally car. Really cool piece. It's got a Ford Cosworth engine in it that's had a bunch of work done to it. And a carbon fiber all over the place. It's a pretty cool looking deal. Here's the Falcon Tom mentioned earlier. This is a really neat looking one. They've put a cage in it. They, it's got a three link live axle in it with some horizontal shocks in the trunk. And really cool looking steel flares they've added onto it. Uh, this thing's going to be a pretty neat looking one, I think, when it's done. Looks like a Pro Tour car or something. Got a uh, great big uh, well with brakes on it and so on.
I hope you like that look at a GT40. I never think of that term the same way again. So I said I'd show you some cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, on my way back up to Pete Snake Bite Kit Studio, get to work on that Cobra. Sorry, the GoPro is bouncing around. Hey, you guys stay safe out there. Take care.